So this is kind of an experiment and I'm curious to see what happens and I'll consider it a success if uh, even one person nibbles at my offer. So um, there's going to be a nibble offer, just remember that. Um, four things have prompted this. The first, uh, I just finished uh, a term paper for uh, my Systematic Theologies course at Colgate Rochester Crozier Divinity School where I take some classes and it's for uh, James Evans and his Systematic Theologies class and I'm dealing with um, theological uh, issues regarding revelation and in issues of interpretation, specifically interpretive communities. So I handed that puppy over today and it is off. Um, second, um, there was a post about a week ago from the Transforming Theology Project and Philip Clayton was interviewing Tony Jones and he asked Tony Jones, so how do you think that um, theology has changed since Google and the internet has become so prevalent? And Tony was talking about how it was that it was so much easier to get information out there. He gave a little anecdote about how a paper that he delivered at a conservative college wasn't published in their book, so instead he published it on a blog and as a result it was read by X thousand people uh, more than the purchased the book. And so he said that that allowed for blogging to happen and back and forth and he was critiqued and he acknowledged some differences and change. And so I was thinking about that while I was writing this paper. I just saw um, a blog by uh, Blake uh, Hudgens and he was talking about uh, Leotard and Moltmann and in the comments section there was this back and forth right off the bat and someone said no 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 you're thinking about the wrong things postmodernity isn't the answer you gotta go just to the text and Blake did a really good job of saying you know there's no such thing as a Blake blank uh, Blake slate <laughs> thing as a blank slate um, you know we're always dealing with interpretation and I felt like that was a really interesting dialogue back and forth there on Blake's uh, blog, Irreligiosity. And then um, there was also a piece over on, um, who is that? Jonathan Brink's uh, blog, what does he call it? Uh, Missio Dei. And he was talking about the Conservopedia guy, the, the conservative Bible project that was on Stephen Colbert. Um, and um, also the... Um, a post from Philip Clayton. And I had tweeted um, last week about the, the conservative Bible project. I thought it was a fascinating thing. I saw it on the, um, on, on the Colbert Rapport. And um, so all of these things have been kind of tootling around in my head. And um, it amounts to this. Um, I have been invited to deliver a paper in the spring um, at the Claremont uh, Theopoetics Conference hosted by Roland Faber. And uh, I hope to be able to go to that. I think that I want to put it online and make it public and see what people out there think about it. Because it deals with issues of interpretation. It deals with this idea of there being a blank slate. It deals with postmodern thinkers, although it doesn't talk about Leotard directly. It deals with this idea um, that uh, Stephen Colbert was talking about. Like, who gets to decide what's true? And it deals with the fact that uh, you're the internet viewers. You're out in the world and for whatever reason it is that you wanna uh, hear what I have to say, either to critique um, or, or learn or be in solidarity or just be exposed to whatever the heck it is that this Quaker in Rochester, New York is thinking, there's something about the fact that you're here now that makes me want to say, hey, do you wanna read my paper? Talk to me about it. So I'm gonna um, upload it and put it here and um, take critique. And I think, assuming I do go to this conference in the spring, I will bring this paper. And so not only will I be bringing this paper that I've thought about myself, but I'm also opening uh, it to critique from other folks um, because I think that the issue of interpretive communities, about what it means to make something true, um, our interpretation and the difference between interpretation and revelation is incredibly important. And I've been thinking about it a lot for the past you know, three or four months, and I would be interested in hearing if any of you find the results of my thinking uh, of any worth. So I'll post it below, link to it, and I would love to hear from any of you who've got any comments about it. Um, we could Skype. We could talk on the telephone. We could, well, we can't write a letter. That's ridiculous.